Well, welcome back to the show, the show of shows. I'm your host, Brandon Burns. Next to me is Chris Titley. How are you? Hello, Brandon. <laughs> it's a pleasure to be here in what I can only describe as a little bit colder than Brisbane. Um, I'm wearing really? the jumper and the puffer jacket. I was going to say, you haven't acclimatised very Three well, Three pairs of you? underwears, four pairs of socks. And I'm four feeling pairs like of <laughs> socks. How did you fit into your shoes? <laughs> <laughs> big feet, big, big feet. feet. Yeah. Would you buy extra big shoes and then if you need to wear four pairs of socks, you'll always fit in? Always fit in, that's right. That's no, it. I agree, yeah. So, look, it's it's a pleasure to be here in Melbourne. Um, yeah. You're here for the Finneys tonight. No, 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 you're here for us. Oh, you're right, And Sorry. you fit the Finneys in Correct. around us, isn't that right? Yeah, for you. And then there's a peripheral event called the Finneys later on tonight. The peripheral event. That's are it. you up for an award or are you giving no, out an award? No, I was, a, I was a judge. You were a judge? Yeah, for the round two. Do you have to I don't be know like how many rounds there were, to be honest. There probably 17 rounds, and I was round two. Maybe there's four rounds, and at round two you got cut as a judge. <laughs> as a judge. Like, that work? Like a, a, uh, a, a super a, yeah, judge. A super judge, yeah, that's right. So, But uh, no, I look forward to finding out what's happening. Uh, 460 people, I believe. Yeah, so. yeah. Would some say a super spreader event, <laughs> potentially? <laughs> that's right. <laughs> now we're all the over that. High. <laughs> we're all over. How, how's it going in Brisbane? Like, is Brisbane pretty similar to Melbourne? Yeah, it's it's still everywhere. It's still events getting cancelled or people pulling the plug. Uh, my son plays AFL, and last night there was four people pull out the last minute again. Really? Sickness, COVID, COVID sickness. How, how old is he? Uh, my oldest is nine. So is he playing in a team of like eighteen kids on the field? Uh, no, it's I think it's seven on the field. No, actually, five, three, and three, eleven. Yeah. Then my maths is good because I, I, I coach yeah. my girls soccer and we've got six and we had three out and usually you have to have four to field a team. Yep. So on the weekend, did you fill in? No, I, I, I wanted to. <laughs> um, I said I only use my left boot, but because I'm really good. Yep. Okay, like I'm a really good soccer player. No, no, no. My son filled in, who's um ten, so he just had to hang back and they they volunteered it. Because they didn't want the kids not to be able to play, but it's it's wreaked havoc, you know. It has, like yeah, and we we also had a couple <coughs> of um, a couple of rainy weeks, uh, a couple of floods as well. So oh, of course. So it feels like this year hasn't begun really. There's been cancelled sporting events, COVID sickness, you know, hiccup, hiccup, stop, start, stop, start. So Where you are in Brisbane, were you affected by the major uh, n- floods? No, um, no, but suburbs peripheral to us: Windsor, Wilston. I live in Grange. Very fortunate that that yeah. wasn't, but some of our friend streets were. Yeah, is that where the famous red wine come from? Where you live, Grange? Uh, yeah, well, that, that's what I say. So we <laughs> normally drink it on a Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. Does it Saturday. taste more authentic? <laughs> <laughs> I, to be honest, I've only ever had one one taste of Grange in my entire life. Well, wow. one. Did yeah. you savor it? Uh, yes. Did you well, do the what the wine knob thing you, and sort I'm of not, swirl you know, it around? And well, you, you had to really because it was grains, right? You couldn't not couldn't swirl. <laughs> I only got that much. Done, hook, yeah, shot, shot glass done. You know, no. shot glass of wine. I love that. <laughs> um, so you're in Brisbane, and so all these people have been affected by floods, sort of like around you. Yep. Has there been like a really good banding together of the community yeah. and helping yep. out? It has been, and, and it's yeah supporting local. And there's a lot of. Actually, one particular bakery in our area is not reopening. There's some, you know, everyone was trying to do their thing on the on the on the weeks during it and after it, and yeah. and certainly, um, yeah, some restaurants are still um, short on staff and, and whatnot. So, you know, <laughs> trying to do our best, but yes, that, that that definitely was the case. I think I've been reading about how there's like a housing crisis and a housing shortage, and then on top of that, you've got all these suburbs and areas that were flood affected that aren't able to kind of inhabit their existing dwelling or yeah. house so they're putting even more pressure on an already overloaded rental yeah there's a lot know. of things going on a lot of things going that's on that's full on isn't it yeah. and it's amazing how quickly you know in other parts of the country we kind of out of mind out of sight mm. no, but, no that's true know. australia's got own little little hubs but you know we're yeah all well you're in one brisbane yeah. i mean are you and and are you like in like a co-working space or are you on your own? So or? I am now um, working in a group called ACAC or ACAC Innovation. In it's a family office out of Brisbane. So they nice. invest in startups. They've d- invested in about thirty odd startups. Uh, and as part of their investment process, they provide free rent for the startups that they've invested in. Nice. Um, I'm so they not can keep a close eye. <laughs> Potentially, I'm not. Where are you spending our money? I'm not uh, invested. I'm, I'm not backed by them, but they had a couple of spare seats, so I've, I've jumped in there. It's nice, nice. Yeah, there's something magical about a co-working space if done right. Mm. So I used to run one in Geelong, a regional area, and we always it's used Geelong, to... a regional area? Well, th- this is the debate. I mean, it's a bit out of control. Yeah, Ben and I, we're both from there, and um, it's pretty explosive now. Yeah, but um, you're a cats fan. 
I am a Cats fan. Yeah, right. Yes. But, uh, just who's on top of the table? I can't recall. Sorry. Uh, Melbourne. Mm, or it depends what or happens Brisbane. tonight. Depends Brisbane, what happens tonight. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, for those of you listening to this podcast after the fact, we recorded on the date that Melbourne and Brisbane played football. <laughs> That's right, we shouldn't be time stamping it, should we? Yeah. yeah, but Brisbane people listening, they like rugby, don't they? Uh, well, yeah, rugby league. Rugby league. Rugby union. They don't like AFL. Hey, well, it's, it's, it's growing now, they're the top of the table. So yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, so it's just, you know, if they're going well, we like them. If they're not... The bandwagon. The bandwagon. <laughs> Do you feel like um, startups in Australia and the whole environment and community can feel a bit bandwagon as well? That's a serious question. You've gone from it AFL is. to startups. Because I like a good segue. Right, it, yeah, you did a good segue. Um, uh, the bandwagon. Look, it's uh, it's interesting. I mean, I've been personally involved in the startup ecosystem probably in mid fifteen when I first went down and and um, met Steve Baxter at River City Labs and what he was doing. And to be Shark Tank you, judge, yeah, he's the Shark, the Shark Tank, Tank guy, judge, yeah. yeah. And <coughs> yes, um, uh, it wasn't really bandwagon back then. Like the word yeah. entrepreneur yep. meant. Uh, unemployed? No, I just shouldn't say that. But along those lines, or I wear jeans, <coughs> sneakers, and a cool yeah. shirt with my business's Storytelling name on it. was uh, childish. It was like a what? Uh, you're writing a child a children's book? Yeah, you're a startup. Now storytelling is the thing. Do you um, need a hand starting that up? <laughs> yeah, um, and so yes, it, it has changed, um, but it's changed for the better, I think. What I mean by bandwagony <coughs> is, uh, it feels like it's a very popular vocation, but once you do it, it's actually like. It's pretty challenging. There's good things about it. Undoubtedly. Like, yeah, yeah, like you're going to the Finneys, which is one, you know, sub kind of vertical of the startup community. Yep. And in general, it feels like a pretty progressive, trendy environment. You can work yep. from home. You know, it's one of the first to adopt. You know what, I think COVID's probably changed that, to be honest, in, in yeah? regards to the, the the idea of being a bit more flexible around your work. And, and if you are in a professional services firm or whatever you're doing and you think, oh, let's just... I can work one day here and work one day there and maybe there's something out there for me to, to be my own um, company or startup or whatever you want to term. Yeah. So so you're you're working from an office but also from home. What do you prefer? I prefer the office. Yeah. yeah. You just share ideas. You do you feel people. like when you say that but people think, oh, well, he's old school, he's stuck no, in I'll his I'll tell you ways. what, I'll, I'll, there's an analogy that I'll give. You know when you travel to places and you like the city, mm-hmm. right, and you go, but I couldn't live here? You're like I, 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 I love going here, and I can. I don't, let's call it um, <laughs> Istanbul, right? And you go, oh, this is a great city. I could spend days here, and you do spend your three days, your four days. You great city, great city. But I couldn't live there. It's a bit like working from home. Like you go, oh, this is good. I Wear can my live pajamas. Here. I can live here, and or not, you know, not not that, but like I could you know, never I, work. Yeah, I could, I could go here, and I could do one day a week or two days a week here, but I couldn't do it five days a week. Yep, just can't do it. Like yeah. you just get bored. In your head, yeah, correct. Right, you want to speak to someone, yeah, because you're only speaking to yourself. Well, we're speaking now. We are. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I agree. I like the flip of that. It's like, hey, I could live here, but I definitely couldn't work here. Yeah, so one day a week, two day weeks. You know, I, I, I'm doing probably one and a half days a week from home. Yeah, and three and a half in the office. What does a half day look like at home? Uh, it's mayhem in the morning with children. Yep, and then there might be the odd piece of exercise. So, what working parent? Is getting any work done now between eight or seven thirty and nine? Yep. And how many of those people were lying to their employer before the pandemic, saying they were getting work done? And then yeah, the flip side at uh, the end of it, the, the three o'clock to yeah. five o'clock, yeah, or whatever, four thirty, uh, none. <clears throat> I really enjoy actually working later in the evening when I'm in the zone because you literally feel like you're getting a jump on everyone else because they're not working. Like, it's just something in my mind makes me think, oh, and it's amazing how it's no more quiet or loud than at that time of day in the world, but it definitely feels like it mentally. Yep. You I feel reckon like I'm you can do 20% more in the- capacity when I have three kids at home. Yeah. All day, for instance, hypothetical school holidays. Is your wife working as well? Yes, yeah, she works. She's an yeah. interior designer. At home? No. So she's continually changing the blinds, the couch, the rug, everything, Yeah. Uh, no, I'd, I'd do that. <laughs> but she's an interior designer. Oh, yeah, sorry, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she's like continually just changing everything. You're like, slow. honey. Yeah, no, no, she's um, very colourful. Yep. What does she design? Like homes yes, or homes. offices? Yep. Wow, that's pretty cool. Got a very pink door. Yeah, no offence, but she's got a more interesting job than you. But she does, yeah, and she sees um, <laughs> a lot more living rooms and bathrooms than I do too. Yeah. Does she do a lot of staging? 
Uh, they've got a showroom. It feels um, like everyone who sells a house, oh, you've got to get it staged. That's a good question. I know they've done a little bit, but maybe not. They just do a lot of, like, a lot of people during the last few years have been wanting to spend money on their homes. Yeah, totally. Well. Rearranging and changing and upgrading and downgrading. Yeah. yeah. So, I have to ask you, mate, because, you know, there'll be people watching and listening um, who want to know, how does a stockbroker, yep. finance corporate dude, <laughs> yep. finally decide to become a startup founder? So, gradual progression. Um, so, I'll take you back to 2015. Take me back. Take, was there a song, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Don't stop. <laughs> take me back to you. <laughs> We're the only ones laughing, by the way. Um, so take me back to 2015 and uh, what I called uh, Aussie.com 2.0 started. And 1.0, for reference point, would be along the lines of, say, car sales, oh, yeah. uh, realestate.com. Black Seek. and white real estate. Um, All websites. very thriving businesses still to this day. <clears throat> yeah. 2.0 started to list around 14, 15, 16. We had um, Make an X, Zero. Uh, Kogan, Afterpay. Um, what else was there around that time? Um, freelancer as well. Mm. And for me, I had this inquisitive interest of going, well, I'm actually one of three children. My two older siblings are both computer programmers. And so I'd sort of grown up loosely with the internet and coding and things like that. But I had this sort of interest in tech. So I started meeting these CFOs and CEOs. This is a very long story. Are you okay with that? I'm, I'm enjoying it. <laughs> I'm just thinking like, so you've got two siblings who are programmers and coders. Yep. Are they yep. like billionaire startup? No, unicorns? they work for, for corporates. Ah, okay. One for an IT firm and one for a, um, a traditional business. Right? Yeah. And um, so I started meeting these CFOs and CEOs and, and their stock prices were going up and things were valued at hundreds of millions of dollars. And you're like, okay, why? Like, why is it going up? And... Then all of a sudden these new metrics came about, like you know, ARR and CAC and, and I'm like... Tam, I'm like, Sam. And I'm like, uh, what, what's uh, the NPAT? And I'm like, That's, how, how, does, what, how do you make money and things like that, right? So, curious. That's a good question. How do you make money? Yeah. And so that's kind of where, you know, and this is kind of a, still true to today, um, where we're at in this current market cycle. But So I started meeting them and I was like, okay, so these are the listed companies, they're, they're established... Um, and they're going for growth and they're going for to change the world, where are the next wave of companies coming from? So I went down to see Steve Baxter at River City Labs in Brisbane, the only co-working space at the time that just probably just launched around, and they're probably a couple of years old, I can't remember actually to the day when they started, but when I went down and saw what was happening in this co-working space, firstly I didn't know what a co-working space was, I was like, wow, what is, who are these people and what are they doing? And there was an accelerator program um, going on at the time, which, again, I didn't know what that was. That was Muru D. That was backed by Telstra back in the day. And so I started meeting these people, and they're like, why do you want to meet? I'm like, well, I'm interested in what you do. And so I started having lots of coffees and started putting a spreadsheet together of who I was meeting and what they were doing and sort of asking, like, how I can help and, mm. and, and saying, what's, you know, is there anything you need? And I was really curious about it. Then mm. they ran trips to Silicon Valley, which I didn't – go on any of these trips but I used to go on hear about what they were up to and when they came back and what they were learning and it was very interesting uh, to the point where I felt that when I saw someone on the street and I had coffee with them like maybe two weeks ago and they were wearing their startup t-shirt with a cool name which you can't remember because it's hard to spell or whatever it might be <laughs> deliberately misspelt I was like hi how are you going they're great blah, 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 blah. I'm like I can't remember what you do like yeah. because it's all a blur like a lot of it was cloud and this and what that. What about people who list out what they do on their LinkedIn profile? It's like helping people be better humans. You know, that's and a whole and other conversation. They're building about. an app, but it's like it's no, my story, by the way. You've just cut, yeah, you've interrupted sorry, <laughs> Simon Sinek. <Yeah. laughs> What's your why? <laughs> and so I was like, okay, there's got to be a better way. And I was like, maybe I should start a fund. Maybe I should get some mates together and do a unit trust and invest in these things or whatever. Um, that didn't didn't end up eventuating, but. The next day I went down uh, and I was like, okay, they're all just sitting there on their keyboards at like Thursday at 11am and they're tapping away and they've got their headphones on. I was like, okay. And I asked the general manager, a guy called Josh Anthony, I actually don't know what Josh is up to, but he was the general manager of River City Labs. He said, I said, what are they doing? Like, and they're programming and coding and UI, what are all the UI and UX and everything? Mm. 
and like, what are they listening? Is it like heavy metal music or are they what, they're on their phones? And he's like, yeah, they're on Snapchat, looking at like VC people in the US, and Snapchat was cool back then for people of older age. It's yeah, sort of has multiple uses. Yeah, it has too, multiple yeah. uses. And they're listening to podcasts, and I was like, what's a podcast? <laughs> what's a podcast? And he's like. It's uh, like an information tool they listen to on how to get funded, how to refine their pitch. They listen to A16Z and, and, and features on VC firms and other people in the US. So I was like, okay, right. So is there a podcast of people telling stories about these startups? He's like, no, I don't think so. I'm like, okay, maybe I should do one. He's like, that sounds like a good idea. So I pitched to my CEO at the time and said, can I spend a bit of time doing a Podcast, and they're like, "What's a podcast?" And uh, it's going to be on startups. Now, like, what's a startup? Right. So, um, after we got over that hurdle, what's a Snapchat? Oh, hey, yeah. Let me show you. <laughs> I ended up um, recording my first in December of 2015 with Steve Baxter, and it just so happened they'd released a national innovation framework, or along those lines. White White Roy was part of that at the time under Malcolm Turnbull, and so I sort of loosely read that. And, uh, and then went to Steve, what do you think about that? And I really had no idea what I was doing at the time, but it was interesting to hear Steve's view on his story about Pipe Networks and went up to Silicon Valley and Google and setting up River City Labs for non-for-profit, you know, where he is today with 1013, amongst other things, and Shark Tank beyond that. So it was fascinating. Anyway, at the end of it, he goes, oh, that was, that was really good. You should talk to another Brisbane-based company called Go One. I'm like, okay, cool, all right. And then at the same time, I then went over to... Um, interview someone else and goes, I oh, used to talk to such and such. And I was like, this is interesting. I'm like following a little trail here of people that are going, oh, you should talk to such and such. Anyway, we'll cut a, cut a fast forward story to 2020. So that's five years. And I'd interviewed about 350 people across investors, listed companies and their tech strategy, startups, scale-ups, people that don't want to be called startups, you know, in between, everyone in between, right? And I had a heap of fun doing it. So got to 2020 and I'm like, okay, so I'm interviewing uh, people in resource tech and energy tech and sports tech. And I'm like, this is really interesting, but I don't really have too much expertise to add any value. I don't know the intricacies of the energy market or whether to get half a percent better grading on some tech for mining to actually make a material difference. So I really don't know whether your thing's going to work or not. I'm happy to help where I can, but I really don't have any understanding of what you're talking about. Um, so I sat down and thought, okay, where can I f- spend my focus and my time over the next five or ten years? This is still obviously still being the stockbroker thing um, and really have some fun. And I work in financial services, worked in financial services, and I like technology, finance, te- tech, fintech, fintech. Wow. And it was all happening at the time in mid-2020, post-COVID. So I'm like, let's learn as much as possible about fintech. How do I do that? Okay, well, let's, let's start interviewing some people. So I then pitched to a couple of people at the firm to do a new podcast series called Bank to the Future, which I'll credit my wife for the name. It's quite a cool name, except when people don't know the movie Back to the Future. Ooh, Bank bit, to the Future. They're a bit like, younger. Yes. And they're like, huh? Is she Banking a fan? to the Future. You're like, no, 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 it's not Banking to the Future. <laughs> a bank of the Future. No, 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 no. Bank to the Future. And they're like, huh? But people who love, you know, love the movies, the, the trilogy with Michael J. Fox, get the joke or get the series. Have you right. got a hoverboard? Uh, no, I wish I'd have one. When was that? 2015, wasn't it? Bank, the, the <laughs> number two? Like that, yeah. Um, and I, I, I love the, love the trilogy. Anyway, so I thought, okay, let's educate clients and investors of Morgans in bank shares and super funds that have bank shares directly and give people a picture of what's happening in and around the banking sector in Australia. And I started the podcast Bank to the Future on the 1st of July 2020 with Dom Pym as my first guest, uh, who was very enthusiastic about the sector. Start of the financial year. Start of the financial year and also the day that quote-unquote open banking went Mm -hmm. live in Australia. Then I got chatting to um, a guy called Brett Kelly, who's the CEO of Kelly Partners, a listed accounting firm, and Brett was experimenting with social media and he was following the path of other social media people and pr- providing pieces of content on multiple platforms. And he did this experiment of providing um, some content on multiple different platforms for a short period of time to see if it worked, to see what the, all the fuss was about. 
And to the end, I was chatting to Brett, and he's saying it became a little bit uh, overwhelming to, to provide, to, to, to do things daily, multiple times a day on multiple different platforms. And so I thought in my head, okay, why don't I simplify this and do one piece of content on one platform a day? And I chose LinkedIn as that platform because I felt it was the most appropriate in terms of business and engagement as opposed to Insta, TikTok um, and Facebook. It's more polite playing ground. Yeah, it, it is. And I, I continually have this evolving discussion around what platforms work and what don't. But for me, LinkedIn works for me, right? And, and it, it, TikTok works for someone else and TikTok works for... Do you like doing like choreographed dance Not moves? particularly. Really? No. I reckon you do a mad robot... There's the, the, apparently there's a dance floor at the Finney's tonight. So, Ooh, uh, the worm. <laughs> we, could we be, shall see. You and Dom could dare each other. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, and so I, on the 15th of August 2020, I started posting daily on LinkedIn about the happenings of the fintech ecosystem in Australia. Have what you posted there? today already? Uh, not today, no. When do you go live time usually? I don't buy into any of that. Really? No. Nice. So we, we just, we've got to be, keep guessing, like, you know, we're just... If something happens and I waiting. feel like, I feel there's feel three it. criteria for me. It has to be informative. Again, that's subjective. Um, it has to be educational. Again, subjective. But for me, if it informs me and, I'm, and I learn from it, and also objective, which I think, is, you know, for me, works for me, where I sit in the middle and provide... The dinner, the dinner table. People can do whatever they want with that particular piece of information. It's not for me to say right or wrong. It's like, are, the, are you the entree? No, again, I'm not food. I reckon I'm I'm more of a table. <laughs> really? Like at the cutlery, maybe. Have you ever been a chair or a chairman? Uh, depends on what setting. You're right. Maybe I could be the chair in an amphitheater. <laughs> I reckon you could. Yeah. You like a bit of music? I do like. You know what I'm listening to at the moment? What? Gang of Years. Ooh. Mm. And Holy Holy. Holy Holy. Yeah. Is that a band? It's a band. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Not the golf <laughs> thing. Holy Have you Moly. ever been in a band? No. If you were, which person would you want to be? The quiet achiever that no one knows about. So that the guy who writes the songs but just plays the keyboard in the yeah, background. And then people, when you go to a bar, they're like, what do you do? And you're like, oh, I'm the, I'm the, I'm the drummer for you too. They're like, <laughs> no, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> Drummers get all the chicks. <laughs> What do you call a person who hangs around with musicians? A drummer. Oh, there you go. But anyway. Um, have you ever been in a band? <laughs> yes, I have. But I was the least talented cog in the machine. Right. But that's a good thing. Surround yourself with people who are more talented than you. It's a life, and life, yeah, uh, yeah, life leverage. Lesson. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Now, hang on. So we were talking your daily content. My daily content, yes, which, that's right. Which for everyone listening and watching, some people will have seen it, some wouldn't have. It's a ripper. You'd have to be like the most kind of like – uh, influential person in like fintech in Australia on LinkedIn, you know, because of the way you style it and you go about it and the response you seem to get. You know what? <laughs> short form works for me. Again, Are you a like, link fluencer? A link flu- no, I can't be a finfluencer because that's a bad thing. Is it really? Yeah. You don't want to be a finfluencer because you a, can be like providing a financial advice. And right. I've, I've never intended and don't provide financial advice, but. It will work for anyone that really kind See, of... See, isn't that funny, but because I, I get it, but like, it's like you've been a stockbroker. Buy stock Bitcoin, broker. it's going to the moon, you know. Like yeah, you but you've been that. a stockbroker forever. If anyone's going to give good advice or you're at the barbecue, who are you going to ask? You're going to ask your stockbroker, mate. It's, yeah. Well, He's that's in it every day. Yeah, that's, it's a... It's <coughs> crazy how you can't give advice, but it's like we all know that if I had to pick someone in my you life know what, to go and get it from... regulation is a good thing, though. Like, you know, I, yeah. I, 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 I think... But why can't we talk more openly about... What's good or bad for investment? Like, for example, in America, it feels like generic like people who aren't involved in finance are way more into talking about it generally. Yeah. Like it's, you know, it's not just like in Australia, it's property and investment properties. In America, everyone talks about their shares as well. They but you and I can talk about our shares now. I'm not, I'm not an authorised representative anymore. Yeah. I guess that's right. I was, you yeah. know, I, I had to be extremely careful of what I was sure, to yeah. say in public. Yeah, because yeah. what I, the point I'm getting at is like, I reckon it's actually quite confusing for a regular punter on where to actually go for advice at all when it comes to like what's good investment. It's a good question. I think you know, it's most people would mm-hmm. go, oh, my bank or my accountant. Wouldn't I agree. They? Yeah. Yeah. And, and someone that's trusted. For and them. it's like yeah. some people want to get advice because they just want to do better. I've lost my water. Oh, here you go. Oh, this one. Yeah. yeah. No, I agree. I think it's a... Uh, you know what I mean? Like, I remember when uh, my wife and I bought our first house and we kind of went to the 
guy who was getting us the mortgage and we said, oh, what we really want to do is we want to learn and understand how, before we have kids, how we can have a crack at setting ourselves up. And all he could really do for us was put us into a bigger home loan or give us a home loan to go and get an investment property. I was like, oh, but I kind of want to know if maybe we should do a bit of shares or we should... And we couldn't really find anyone to do that. Yeah, look, it's <coughs> it's an <coughs> ongoing discussion around the education of financial wellness. For What's sure. It's a, it's a, it's what a, spoils it? Why is it so... Um, touchy and so sensitive Regulation is good But what spoils it Is because people give bad advice To people who are taken advantage of uh, uh, It's a good question I don't really know Apart from the fact that Selling financial products Is different to selling golf balls It's yep. people's livelihood So you need regulation Absolutely um, So we were, we were getting closer to oh, yes. This launch to yeah, yeah. I, I do that a lot I apologise I jumped But yeah You digress We do We digress but yeah, we headed off down mm. the garden path. We did, yes. Yeah. So I was posting on LinkedIn and uh, it was enjoyable. I was getting some good feedback and everything was kind of short form and I was creating some pieces of content without really spending like hours on it. I was like, okay, this is news or it's someone's funded or there's a partnership or whatnot. Um, and then what happened was some people started um, giving me some inbound stuff and going, hey, Chris, uh, we've just signed a partnership with Nexus now. We've just raised three million bucks or whatever it might be. I was like, this is good. This yeah. is cool. PR machine. Um, so uh, from that, I continued to post and continue to do the podcast until a point where I'd had some early discussions with uh, Dom Pim about some ideas that I was having around startups and what's missing and what's not and fintech, etc. And lo and behold, he his company, Frosha, got acquired by Bendigo uh, late last year. And um, I sent Dom a text, like, what are you going to do now, basically? And he said he's going to do some investing and give back to the startup ecosystem and build a family office, of which he's uh, launched, uh, called Euphemia. Um, and I was interested about what he was trying to do because I'd followed up for a I'm, – I'm an up user and I followed up for two or three years and their progress and how they were doing banking differently. And it is amazing, and Banking yeah? is just a core vanilla product which not many people have any kind of emotional happiness towards. Banking. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And, um, you know, it, it is spending and savings, and that's what Up did. But they did it in a way where you can go, hang on a second, are you with Up? You know, because I'm with this cool bank. And mm. they're like, why would you want to suggest a bank to someone else, right? You Do don't you go and say, oh, you know, I'm with down one of the big four. Would you like to be one of the, with one of the big four? People don't do that. And they only don't do that because they're not really overly happy or excited by using the product. When I used up, it was like my Uber moment. Really? I was like going, this is different. So, so now that you're using it, what, are you saving more or are you just no, having I more fun? I don't think I'm doing – I'm having more fun. I don't think I'm yeah. inherently doing anything different. Are you getting your kids involved? Yeah, I've got kids' accounts. So I was going to say that, that sounds setup, really cool. Right? Yeah, yeah, get them saving everything, yeah? And the roundups and things. It's the different things which, you know, like it's a bit like WhatsApp and text messaging yeah, or phone calls. You're like, I could call you and we could have a chat. I, I could reckon. send you a message on Messenger. You could get it. Or I could use WhatsApp. It's like the same thing. I'm talking to you and I'm communicating but with you. Mark Zuckerberg can have all of our data. Another, again, another podcast, right? You're digressing again, Brandon. <laughs> it's because you're so interesting and dynamic, Chris. There so, you yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you've so been talking to Dom. It's the same thing, Dom. but it's different, right? So, I was talking to Dom, right? And I was like, what are you going to do? And blah, blah, blah. Anyway, he, he, um, he and I kept the dialogue going. And then come towards this year, we're like, um, it's like, Chris, you know, I'm kind of keen to in, invest and help you um, mm. transition into being whatever you want to be, which was like an opportunity which not many people get in their lives. And I, I thought to, you know, thought really hard and deep about where I could fit in and what I love doing. And I love getting behind the mic, not necessarily as the guest. Yeah. How does it feel? It feels liberating. Do you feel like you're holding back? Or do you no, feel like not at all. You're no. jumping straight in. No. Yep. You sound good as a guest. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Could you say for me iceberg lettuce? Iceberg lettuce. Oh, nice. Um, very crisp. And so I love interviewing and I love um, meeting new people and helping where I can, etc. So I sort of pitched the idea of with, you know, with the help of Judy Anderson Frith, who's um, Dom CEO of Family Office Euphemia, about doing content full time in the Australian startup ecosystem to make material different somehow. 
um, because I'm of the belief that content can change the directional course of someone's life just through awareness of what's going on. I'll give you an example. Like, for instance, I met with a company in Brisbane and they were looking for someone uh, to head up their enterprise sales. The next day I lucked out and had coffee with someone who just exited their business because I'd heard about them, seen them and met them, who's looking for a position to be in enterprise sales. Lo and behold, he's now the head of enterprise sales of this business called Tanda in Brisbane. And he's so now sits you, on the Australian board. What would you do if the Australian energy sector had a blackout, but it only affected LinkedIn as an app? Ah, good How question. How would you go for like a week? You're trying to, get, you're trying to sting me here. <laughs> it's not going to work. You know why? Because everything I do on LinkedIn gets backed up outside of LinkedIn. On where? Like on, I, use a, I use freelancer.com <coughs> to, to do that. So someone scrapes my entire LinkedIn has put it into a, an Excel Word document. Both As in your contacts or in your content? Oh, the contacts. Yeah, that's a good one. No, like no, I mean the, the content. content. Like, I've got so the content. So I've got every piece of content I've ever done offline. And why is why? But why do you like as as well as the stats and all the engagement, or just the content? No, just the content. Is that because you're worried about LinkedIn removing it, and you want to be able to access it to? Oh, you just mentioned about a blackout and LinkedIn yeah. going down. Yeah, That's right. Why. Okay, so but forever um, for for whatever but, reason. But, but, but I guess the question is, why do you need a piece of content from the past? It's a data reference point, isn't it? Yeah, I guess so, yeah. Or is it more just because you well, want to see... you go back and say, oh, two years ago on this day, blah, 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 happened. Okay, there we go. Yeah, Which yeah. in itself is a piece of content. Is that expensive to do, get someone to scrape no, it now and then? No, not at all. No. Yeah. So you've got like a full office in Manila and no, there's... Are you, <laughs> are you aware of freelancing websites, how they work? <laughs> <laughs> yes, but most of the people you engage are based over there. <laughs> There's many platforms you could use, Fiverr. That's interesting. I, I hadn't considered that. Wow. So you back up. Cool. Yeah, but I don't back up the content. So I don't – like the con- the network will inevitably not be there if LinkedIn's not there, which is perfectly fine with me because I feel yeah. like there's – Oh, you a, could – A real-life relationship with people is also very important. Yeah, yeah. but it's like uh, – I, I reckon people like you potentially would take for granted how much people are actually aware of you and your content. Like – or have you now come to realise it, but initially you didn't know how many people were actually seeing your stuff? There was raw numbers, but again, you take that. But you when you have know. those face-to-face conversations, yeah, like you'd have was, people telling you, "Oh my god, I see there was, stuff uh, everywhere." Uh, <laughs> in Sydney, about two months ago, I was having a chat to a, a guy, and um, we were having a having a beer, and then we kept on chatting through the night, and then we never sort of introduced each other. And then at the end of the night, I think it was like 10.30, the pub was shutting or whatever, he's like, oh, yeah, nice to nice to meet you. And I'm like, oh, Chris Titley. And he's like, Chris Titley? I'm like, yes. Can I get like, your autograph, please? Like, I reshared one of your posts today on LinkedIn. I'm like, oh, no, get out of town. Bless. All night, we are just chatting away. And he, and then it was sort of this nice moment for me to go, oh, that's, that's lovely. But, you know what, now we're, you know. Is it because you have connected. a lot of facial hair now and maybe you don't in your LinkedIn photo? Oh, no, I've changed it. Oh, you've changed yeah. it? Yeah. So you're When I moved brand. to Sub 11, which I was getting on to, but you digressed again. Um, was <laughs> it's a long way to find out what you do. Sorry, mate. It's just the two of us now, all the other <laughs> staff around. And it's going to mute my microphone. There was an audience of 100 people here, by the way. Now there's none. Um, so we... Um, yeah, so Sub 11 is the, the brainchild of, of pretty much uh, myself with Judy and, and, and Dom to do content full-time. Now, what does that look like? It looks like... Podcasts. It looks like, again, continually in short form LinkedIn content and short form certain media. We will probably digress to video or newsletters if we so desire. If we feel like it's going to make the impact that it's going to make, and there's no point in doing stuff and that it's not going to make an impact, we don't do it, right? So, very early month in, having a, an absolute ball, having meeting some amazing people, getting some really good content. A lot um, of smashed avo on toast, <laughs> lattes. <laughs> Chili scrambled eggs, thank you. Um, yeah, so no, look, it's 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 really fun, and uh, our first product, which uh, mm. I'll give a give a shameless plug, is um, called My First Podcast, and that's um, for founders or investors who have never done a podcast before. So come and do a podcast mm. with me in a controlled and easy to handheld environment to get that first one off, um, and to to really kind of tell their story. Um, I love that. Now, it's loosely based on Triple J's Unearthed, right? So you, we're trying to unearth technology companies. And on the audience side, we hope there'll be some listeners from VCs and family offices and high net worths to hear about stories that they may not be familiar with. 
because mm. everyone's sort of going down in the cycle. Like you kind of, we want the first check or the second check or we want pre-revenue companies, we want this, we want that. So well, I'm going to unearth. unearth them. So you're going to be a lot of people's first. Correct. And wow. it, that way it also becomes exclusive to me in terms of <laughs> their first interview. Yeah. And I, they I did. tell their story for the first time to yeah. an audience which hopefully engage. Now, this product may or may not work. I think it might work. Yeah. Uh, you're going to have a whole ecosystem of people saying Chris Titley was my first. You know, that's a powerful position to be in, right? <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to let you get away with not acknowledging the... Uh, no, that's cool. So do people pay to do it? No, no. We're making it free. Fire, that's amazing. Yeah. And so... Um, <clears throat> so the, the first episode should be imminent. Yeah. I've recorded about seven or eight already. Wow. Awesome. Um, so how did people find out about it, knowing you haven't sort of published it yet? Was it just a... So I literally just put it up yesterday on LinkedIn. Oh, very um, cool. To say I'm, I'm launching it. And I've had maybe three or four inquiries already. Yeah. That's awesome. I think it'd be really good for once you've done your, your like your full time. You've done a pitch, or maybe you've gone through a program. Mm. Maybe you've gone through Start Mate. Maybe you've gone through various things to go. Okay, well, where do I go to do my first podcast? Yeah, and the obvious answer is my first podcast because that's the name of the show. Yeah, right? well, I, I like that because it welcomes someone who might be feeling anxious about. Yeah, am I worthy or nervous? And you about know what? The, the seven or eight guests I've had um, so far, at the end of it, they're like, "Wow, this is this feels really good." To tell my story, and, and I've never—they're all comfortable because it's mm. their story. Yeah, it's not me telling, you know, asking them about the cryptocurrencies market or whatever things that they may not be familiar with. It's more like, why are you doing this, and yep. how progressed are you? And also, what I'm trying to do, which I feel is another element of content that people underestimate, is the sort of a bit of an action item or an engagement level from it. So I say, how do you need? What are you looking for right now? Who do you want to meet? What mm. are you looking for? Are you looking to partner? Are you looking for customers? Are you looking for a particular person and a, a particular investor? Mm. And let's try and make that happen. I love it. That's, that's awesome. Um, so I have to ask, you've mentioned up, obviously like Dom, Dom and up and all that. It's a yep. great case study of like how to do a startup, right? And then we've had these real darlings of fintech like Afterpay and Zip and others come through. But... In, say, the last four or five years, has there been, like, a founder or a team that has really, really just blown your socks off? And it might not be for the reasons we're thinking, like, you know, money raised or milestones achieved. Yep. I mean, I have one which I can share after you, but yeah. everyone seems <clears throat> to have one that really sticks with them. And you go, no matter what that person does, it could be fintech, it could be anything, they're going to yep. kill it. I'll give you uh, two one, which you mentioned, is Afterpay. So I got to know Nick Molnar very early in the piece. He was in one of my podcast series in early 17. You see the main guy? So there's Nick and Anthony from oh, Afterpay. They, but who's doing what? Oh, they're, doing, they're both equally doing right what on. they're so doing. So they're both right? doing product, yeah. they're both doing all uh, Well, they split their roles eventually, but it was yeah. a really good working relationship between the two of them. Right, so, so it wasn't one particular area that catapulted yeah. that business, it was the cohesion. I, I believe both of them were exceptional in what they did in terms of executing their vision. Yep. Now, what you want to believe in buy now, pay later and, and, and the stock prices and the valuations, et cetera, what they did, they executed brilliantly yep. in what they wanted to do. Uh, and an, ex- they were, they an were, exit, yeah, to a degree. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah they did, yeah. Uh, the other example I'll give, and, and full disclosure, I met uh, Andrew Barnes from Go One uh, doing a podcast and I subsequently invested in Go One. So I am an investor, but watching that story grow over the last five years to where it is now, and they raised a um, hundred million dollars recently. Um, what do they do again? Is that the so it's, developer it's Spotify support? for corporate learning, basically. So right. a, a course marketplace for people. Wow. Um, to, to to for corporates to log on to B2B, to, to um, continually train and educate their stuff. Yeah. And it's a global business, yeah. It's a global business, yeah. So, like, where does Australia's market share rate compared to the rest? They're probably killing it in the US, yeah? yeah? the US is their main market now. Yep. Wow. Spot so, I followed that story again. for since I invested in 2016 to where it is today. Uh, and they're executing very, very well, in my view. Um, and against all market conditions at the moment, they managed to raise, raise some money. Um, okay, so can I ask you a question on those two examples? Yep. So, one's exited. Yep. In a large way. Yep. The others haven't. One's business appears to be on a much, you know, higher kind of growth trajectory. Could be because it's earlier, and the other looks like it's crashed a lot. Maybe because it's its industry. 
is there something to be said for the founders still being really active, engaged, and bought in? Absolutely, yeah. Like I, I so is is that partly why Afterpay might not be doing as well as what it did, or is that just because that's where that space has got to? Because they obviously <coughs> they obviously sold or they exited out a lot yeah, of the look, shares. <coughs> they they felt the merger. You know, in my view, they felt the merger in Square was going to give them an, an an elevated growth path, and you know that's yet to be determined, really. Yeah, because Square, sorry, Block have only owned it for. Nearly, I don't know, nine months or something. Yeah, so, not a long time. Not a long time. But the idea of seeing people with a vision, <clears throat> but then calming that vision down to get the base right before they go to that vision, <clears throat> like you go, oh, we're going global, right? Going global. You're like, how are you going to do that? We got to actually, mm. you know, if you're an Australian company, my, my understanding is you got to probably test the product in Australia first or New Zealand, see how it goes. Now, if it doesn't like fly here and there's a big opportunity overseas, yeah, go for it. But, the you know, Afterpay started here and then they went to the US and they went to the UK and <coughs> and Go yep. One started here and they're going to the US and the UK and and they they do things methodically but there's always this, in my view, there's always this kind of calmer, bigger picture that they're just, it's one step at a time and steps can throw you left, right and centre. But, yeah, I just find like the there wasn't huge amounts of ego Mm. Um, there wasn't huge amounts of there was a, like sort of laser focus on execution in terms of where they want to be and how they want to get there, and I've seen that a number of times in some some founders, and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. But you know, it's it's yeah, it's very hard to kind of judge big vision as one metric of success, but it certainly, in my view, it's it's has been one metric of success. What is sub eleven reference to? So uh, sub eleven, the name comes from uh, sub eleven seconds, which is the time that I wanted to run uh, in a hundred meter race when I was at high school. Wow! Did you get it done once? Ten ninety six. Did you really? Yeah. You got some fast twi- twitch fibers there yeah. in your physiology. Not anymore. Not anymore. No, I've turned forty. <laughs> I drive a hundred meters and I get tired. Really? <laughs> no. Is it a Tesla? No, I don't drive a Tesla. Ooh, no. bucking the trend. Um, You're no so, longer yeah. part of the startup community. <laughs> no, so it reminds me of being fast. It reminds me of going fast. It reminds me of um, uh, healthiness and, and, and being competitive. It reminds me of um, trying to achieve a goal. Yeah. It also reminds me, sprinting also reminds me of preparation. You do a lot of preparation for a very, very, very short period of time, right? And that's I think that's life as well when it comes to presenting a pitch or doing a big – big uh, investment forum or whatever it might be in your life, that that particular part of the execution only lasts for a small part of the preparation time. Totally. I love that. Um, cool name. I'm just assuming is it sub11.com? Dot .au. Dot .au. Yep. <clears throat> All right. So here was a question I really wanted to ask you. Um, are you a professional services business? Are you a startup or are you simply just trying to solve a problem? I think I I think I'm a startup. Yeah. Yep. I don't really know what that means. I just yeah. said that actually. I just picked one. Are you calling yourself a founder? I'm calling myself a director. Ooh, of there we the go. Company. Yeah. Yeah. So not letting go. <coughs> Which of is the an corporate. executive director. So the other director is Don Pim, who's not an executive director. He's an investment partner. Yeah. Cool. Um, okay. FinTech feels like it's here to stay, but it's kind of a bit done as far as how hot it is, mm-hmm. and the ethical elements are really going to ramp up. And there seems to be way more people online comfortable with calling out bad practices. Climate tech's obviously a huge thing. Food, um, vegan stuff. The whole, the whole. But what are you seeing as something that might be not as sexy or amazing, but is something that's going to explode? Or where a founder wanting to solve a problem and not being industry agnostic should have a crack. You mean what? What gaps do I see now? That yeah, that yeah, the because it's like have? there'd be industries that aren't saturated and are screaming out for innovation and are probably due to receive a lot of attention and potentially yeah. government focus and you know funding. What, what area that hasn't really been cracked? And, and no disrespect to the people that are trying to crack it uh, is sort of the um, the personal financial management or the PFM or like the budgeting. Mate, that's that's what I was referencing before. I absolutely love that. But then when you talked about up. What, what got my gears going was when you talked about the children element. Because actually one idea I had this morning in the shower of all places was, like, you know when... I'm in. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you hear, just because you had it in the shower. <laughs> um, you know how 
there's a bunch of um, affluent parents and baby boomers who um, have accrued a lot of property and money and and then there's this whole generation of kids now that are inheriting and they've probably got huge anxiety around what the fuck is my kid going to do with this money? Are they going to cock it up? What's the trajectory of their life going to go like? And how do I pass this on confidently? And I'm not talking about people who are like multi, multi, multi millionaires. I'm talking about people who've like come from low to middle class, made made a fair bit of money through hard work, and now they just want to make sure that it's passed on. And like, I wonder if there could be a tool or a solution that could help them set that up now in advance. And it's almost like an inheritance could be triggered. It's called succession, uh, as in the show. <laughs> Well, you know what I mean? Like, how could you trigger someone's inheritance through not being controlling or judgmental over what they choose to do with their life because you just want your kid to do what, what makes them happy? But how could you, like, trigger it in a way where they wouldn't feel like, oh, mum and dad are only giving me this if I do this, this and this. But Pocket it's, money. You, well, you know what I mean? Yeah, you know what I mean? Because, like, it's, it's too dangerous yeah. giving someone an inheritance and then go, there you go. I don't think this is a new problem, though. No, but it's but it's like, you're right. Like, you just said, the personal finance thing as well, like, I just think, like, the personal finance thing, okay, here's my, here's my super app, right? It's a, a dashboard or, you know, on your phone, et cetera, mm-hmm. that tells you when all your bills are due, like, to the day, to the T, in one thing, and potentially be able to switch providers in the future. And I think Open Banking's trying to do that. But at the same point in time, like, here's your waterfall of expenses. Here's your waterfall of income. How are you going to match the incomings and outgoings in one app easily seen. So I've done a couple of polls on direct debit failures. I've done a couple of polls on bill shock. I've done a couple of polls on, like, let's say you budget, you do this great budget, and then you put a miscellaneous thing for things that you don't expect. And then all of a sudden you go to get your car fixed and it needs four new tyres. And you're like, oh, well, that goes in the miscellaneous column because I didn't expect that. And then your kid gets sick and then something else happens. You're like, oh, let's drag that for miscellaneous. And the miscellaneous, so I've... I've tested budgeting out for many years and, 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 and in my own spreadsheet and what works for me. And the miscellaneous just gets bigger and bigger. And you're like, might as well, everything just might be miscellaneous because someone leaves to overseas and you're like, go to their drinks or something and you're like, oh, there's 50 bucks or 30 bucks to, that you didn't expect because you didn't expect but also them leaving, pe- right? people don't want to look at it knowing subconsciously they're probably going to know deep down, oh, I've blown it. Okay, so let's, let's talk about like you know, after pay and that feeling people were using it, right? And they were mm-hmm. enjoying using it. And then you go to up and people go, oh, I'm enjoying using it. Like when someone says, how much money did you spend on the weekend? People go into a little hole. They're like, what? I do not want to know. Oh, yeah, exactly. Right? So it's a, pa- it's a pain point. So how can someone make that pain point reality? I don't know. That's, there you go. I love that. Jeez, you just you uh, go into a big dark yeah. hole. You're like, oh no, I don't know how much I spend on the weekend. I don't want to know. And then you ask someone, how much money do you spend in an entire year? And then you give them that amount. You could probably do that using one of the banking apps. Mm. I reckon people will like shrivel. They just go, oh no, don't no, that's not true. Mm. Mm. It can't be true. It is true, right? <laughs> so how do you make that feeling into a better feeling? Go, oh yeah, okay. I agree, yeah. but the fact that it's such a Bad feeling yeah. is reason enough to go and solve that problem. So absolutely, I, that's an opportunity for me. Yeah, yeah, not for me, for you. For me, okay. what works well for me. <laughs> <laughs> we're almost out of time, so we're going to have to get you back down and do like a part B, C, oh, D, E. I, I, I figured, yeah, it's my job now. <laughs> it's my job. <laughs> um, Chris Titley, sub eleven dot com dot au. Yep. What at last? I mean, if people can connect with you on LinkedIn. Yep. But what's a parting thought or a way for people to continue the conversation with you? Please connect, say hello, reach out. I enjoy coffees. I enjoy meeting new people. I enjoy networking. I enjoy the odd beer. So say hello, reach out, I'm, and I'm wanting to hear your story. I have to ask because the Finneys are tonight, and by yep. the time this goes live, they'll be over. Who are you tipping in like those main categories? To be honest with you, when I was judging the Finneys, uh, I was judging everyone on you know one by one, and what. And I, to be honest, I don't remember which ones I tipped or voted or whatever. Um, so I, I don't. I'm not going to give a. So this year is more. Ju- more just like whoever's best dressed. Yeah. Well, it's black tie. Black tie. Did you pack a suit? I had to rent one. You had to rent one from down the, here. No, from Brisbane because oh, really? I had one. I bought one in 2017. That's a bit. Actually, weird. that's a lie. 2018. A startup yeah, event. Black tie. It's like we just want to wear our jeans and. Shirts. I bought one in 2018. and I tried it on a couple of days ago. <laughs> James Bond. Yeah, it was no good. No good? No good, four years. So you rented one? I rented one quickly. 
I can't wait to see the selfie. Yeah. Whack it up, mate. Chris or, Titley black tie. That's it. It's, it doesn't really suit me, but I'll give it a go and I'll participate in the best formalities that I possibly can. Chris Titley, <laughs> you're a legend. We're out. See ya. Bye.